This is Matthew Cratter from Trady University. And today I want to talk about the Ethereum merge, which just completed, and I'm calling it Ethereum successfully castrates itself. I apologize for the metaphor, but I really do think it is an apt metaphor. So late last night, at least on my time, Ethereum, the Ethereum merge was created where the proof of work chain was merged with the beacon chain, the new proof of stake chain. So Ethereum has now moved from proof of work to proof of stake. The problem with this is this change allows insiders, as we're going to see, large regulated corporations, and ultimately even governments to control the protocol. And it's a really disgusting thing because they're doing this under uh, while virtue signaling about energy usage. So Ethereum has abandoned a neutral consensus mechanism and exchanged it for a consensus mechanism that lets those with the most coins control the protocol. It's very important to remind ourselves of this. Under proof of stake, the more coins you have, the more control you have over the protocol. Under proof of work, this isn't true. Having more coins does not give you more control over the protocol. So Ethereum has essentially just castrated itself. And I find myself asking, what do you say to a man who, who tells you with a smile that he's just castrated himself? What's the proper etiquette? Do you say congratulations? Do you say, can I drive you to the hospital? And I find myself in a similar predicament today. Should I be politely congratulating Ethereans on their technical achievement? Or should I be laughing at them for castrating themselves and castrating their crypto? They've always told me that we're in this we're all in this together. But then in my comment section, almost every day I get called a maxi pad and all these terms, Bitcoin maximalists that were devised by Vitalik Buterin, one of the co-founders of Ethereum. And then Ethereans also are always lobbying the government. The Web3 VCs are doing this as well. They go before Congress and they claim that Bitcoin is boiling the oceans and destroying the environment. A great example of this on Twitter yesterday was Evan Van Ness, who is a Web3 investor. In his tweet here, he says, this is the last full day in America where proof of work will be seen as a viable technology. Tomorrow, Ethereum switches to proof of stake and obsoletes proof of waste, which is what he calls proof of work forever. This betrays either a huge misunderstanding of consensus mechanisms or what's most li more likely is he does understand the difference, but he's on the Web3 side of things. And what they're basically doing here is they are trying to eliminate one of Satoshi's great innovations. Proof of work was actually devised by Adam Back, but what it does is it provides this really unique way of securing the protocol. And if you get rid of proof of, of work, you really are destroying one of the central innovations of Bitcoin. In one sense, I would say Ethereum has castrated itself by moving from a very strong consensus mechanism to a very weak consensus mechanism that's very prone to capture. But on the other hand, maybe this situation is actually more sinister. As we've talked about before in this channel, Ethereum had this very large pre-mine, a 70% pre-mine, where insiders were awarded themselves large amounts of ETH. This includes the ETH Foundation and ETH Devs and Vitalik etc. Et all the all the, the whales and insiders. Ethereum always planned to move to proof of stake. And so this is the sinister combination. If we go back and take a look at the Ethereum white paper, which I believe was 2014 by Vitalik Buterin, he, he has a paragraph here where he says, note that in the future, it is likely that Ethereum will switch to proof of stake, to a proof of stake model for security. And after eight years, this finally became true last night. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button. Maybe share this video with a few friends. So this is a very, very toxic combination, having a large pre-mine where insiders awarded themselves large amounts of ETH and then moving to proof of stake. Because under proof of stake, those with the most coins exert the most control over the protocol. And technically, this is because they have a higher probability of being chosen to validate or mint the next block. So those with the most coins thus end up earning the most new coins because they get to mine new bl more blocks than anyone else. And so you have this highly centralizing effect. The rich get richer. And I would say, what a coincidence that under the guise of becoming greener, Ethereum, coincidence in, in, in scare quotes, what a coincidence that under the guise of becoming greener, Ethereum is ceding control to beneficiaries of the pre-mine and large crypto exchanges. There may be some overlap here as well. And then, of course, the response I'll get here from Ethereans is, well, wasn't that original group of ETH owners pretty diverse and decentralized? People from all over the world could either buy in or receive Ethereum. 
uh, for free. And I would say almost certainly not that this is a very concentrated group. We have this famous tape from March of 2014 where Joe Lubin, one of the co-founders of Ethereum and the founder of Consensus, which owns a lot of these Ethereum companies, talk in this video or this audio, he talks about how whales can disguise their purchases and wallets. So you can you can watch this video. There's a summary of it here where Lubin answers, uh, someone asks, will there be a limit in the amount a person can invest in Ethereum? And Lubin says, we can limit, we may limit the size, the unit size of the sale just to make it easier to disguise. Let's say if you're a whale and want some privacy. So the diversity of original buyers and recipients of the pre-mine that we, we always hear about, it's, it's likely to be much more homogeneous and much less diverse because where you think you have 10 different people or 10 different groups buying Ethereum in the pre-sale or the pre-mine, you actually just have one whale who, eat, who bought 50,000 units 10 different times. So this is the problem if you start off with a very concentrated protocol and then you move to proof of stake. I would say Ethereans and the whole world are about to learn exactly why Bitcoin doesn't use proof of stake and why Satoshi himself did not choose proof of stake as the consensus mechanism. He wanted some something much more neutral. So we can say now that ETH was probably captured from the beginning, but now it has been officially captured with this move, this castration, this move from proof of work to proof of stake. ETH is now at the mercy of these original insiders, as well as government regulators who can and will, as we saw with the Tornado Cash fiasco, who can and will exert their control through these insiders, through these pre-mine and pre-sale beneficiaries, as well as the large regulated corporations who are and will be the largest validators on Ethereum. And because validation is a very centralizing force where the more coins you have, the more often you get chosen to mine new blocks, which means you earn more coins, which means the more coins you have, you get more, more and more coins. If we take a look at staking pool distribution, Lido controls 30%, Coinbase controls, call it 14%, and Kraken controls 8% here. So you're getting very close when you add up all these large regulated exchanges and regulated groups that have to answer to OFAC, they have to answer to the US Treasury. These are the ones who have the power to censor Ethereum addresses and Ethereum transactions, and they will do it in the same way they did it. They bowed the knee to Tornado Cash. I can guarantee you that Vitalik Buterin will not be true to his word and slash the stakes of these large regulated exchanges if they censor a transaction. Because if he does that, he's hurting just normal people who have staked their ETH with Coinbase or Lido or, or Kraken. You cannot have neutral money under proof of stake, especially if there was a, there was a large pre-mine. You also can't have neutral money, as we've already discussed on this channel, if everyone outsources their nodes to Infura and MetaMask, especially if the parent company of both of those companies, and Fuhr and MetaMask, also happens to be a World Economic Forum. If you like the World Economic Forum, Ethereum is definitely the coin for you. You can just Google who owns MetaMask, who owns Infura, Consensus Software, which is a partner of the World Economic Forum. It's a little bit difficult to see here. But as we know, there are these very close ties between the World Economic Forum and Consensus, as well as the Ethereum Foundation, as we can see from this site right here. If you want to dig a little bit deeper, I know I've summarized a lot in this video, you want to go a little bit deeper into proof of stake and the problems with it, I have a playlist here that you can work your way through where I really go into this in a lot more depth. If you're worried about Bitcoin's energy usage and you want to hear the arguments about it and why it's not a problem at all, you can watch this video, which I'll also link to in the description notes below. This one called Why Bitcoin Mining is Good for the Environment, as well as How Bitcoin Mining Helps the electric grid. Meanwhile, there wasn't a huge amount of volatility, volatility last night with the price either against fiat or against the uh, the ETH BTC pair. We're still trading uh, at approximately the same range we've been trading in since the uh, since the uh, spring of 2021. This this chart, as it goes down, that means that Bitcoin is strengthening relative to Ethereum and vice versa. We can see that this chart is a series of lower highs as Bitcoin continues to appreciate versus Ethereum. With the one exception, we did get a higher high here. I would say though that this whole formation, if you want to do chart analysis on it, looks a little bit like a, a head and shoulders 
which would imply that Bitcoin continues to strengthen against Ethereum. But this cross, I think, is a very important thing that we will be watching over time. The problems with proof of stake will play themselves out over time. This isn't an overnight thing now that the technical challenges have uh, have been surmounted with Ethereum and this move to proof of stake. We're not going to see some overnight blow up, but what we will see is more and more centralization. And then the time will come in a, a more combative environment where there is censorship attempted against the Ethereum protocol. And now that they move to proof of stake, there's going to be nothing standing in the way. This is going to be like the tornado cash fiasco on steroids now that Ethereum has moved to proof of stake and castrated itself. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.